Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian Primhurst, Tribeca Trade Group, and it is Monday, May 4th. Happy Monday, everybody. So theme of the day, I don't know. I just kind of put this out here. I think there was better things that went on today, but I do like to kind of, this kind of stuff humors me a little bit, but I called it basically bounce on Buffett. And the reason why I put that there is because uh, I was traveling a little bit this weekend and, you know, I wanted to listen to what Buffett said. And, you know, all I did was basically open up Twitter and you could see so many people on Twitter. I don't know what you call FinTwit, I guess is what, what you want to call it. But, oh, bearish, like, you know, Buffett didn't even buy anything. Yeah, he sold the airlines and, you know, yada, yada, yada. This is this is horrible that uh, we should be following what Buffett did. He doesn't think there's any good bargains. Yeah, You know, I mean, this kind of thing, it's great for news stories, but it really doesn't, in my opinion, it doesn't really help you in trading. And I think to kind of make conclusions from this is uh, kind of goes back to what we do and, and really where we kind of hone in on, on our edge. When everybody gets to one side of the boat like this, uh, we get a nice bounce, which is basically and some nice trading opportunities, which is which is what we got today. So I was actually hoping that the market would be down a little bit more this morning on this because, again, it really doesn't make any, you know, other than... Uh, you know, sentiment and psycho investor psychology, but um, it, it really doesn't help for in terms of like what you're doing on a daily basis or what you should be doing on a, on a daily basis. And I have the utmost respect for Warren Buffett. Uh, great principles and everything. I actually thought that it was really um, wise and it was one of the things that we talked about in the weekend video that, uh, you know, he sold his, he got out of his losers. And, um, you know, that's something that you have to do from time to time. And so I, I was actually like drawing the positives from what he did. But the other thing is now I have no idea why he didn't buy anything, you know, in the last, you know, over the last month. But one of the things that always comes back to me is if I have too many positions on, and I'm not saying that they're in that situation, but, you know, it, it, ha it happens to me from time to time. If I have too many positions on, sometimes you can't separate what you're doing, you know, from managing your current positions versus seeing the new opportunities that are out there. So I think, you know, from my standpoint, there is lessons uh, to be learned, but I really don't think that you could say, uh, oh, well, he didn't buy anything, so that's overall bad. I mean, they also got caught in all these airlines from, from the beginning. I mean, so that wasn't such the... That that wasn't the the best thing in the world to be to be in all these airlines in the first place. And again, I'm not saying anything negative uh, negative about Buffett, but you know if you're going to take what he said for this, then you have to say, well, why were you in these airlines in the first place? You know, my opinion back you know back before all this started, I don't think any real major issue to to maybe try an investment in an airline, but he had a whole group of airlines that he was holding so uh, you, you can't pick and choose uh, is what, what I'm getting at and um, I think if you just put your head down and you do your analysis uh, you're going to come away with much better results than trying to make a, a go out on Twitter and trying to make a big generalization which I saw a lot of people doing this weekend so that's perfect set up a great trading sentiment for the for the traders like us who are basically just following price looking for setups and in individual names looking for where there's opportunities one of the things that I said was hey I'm gonna you know we saw a lot of names bounce last week that were kind of it was the dash for trash a little bit um, I hate to call it that but um, a lot of like the bottom feeders, you know, rallied pretty much and some of the quality names got sold off. Well, today we saw a rotation back into what I've been calling like the, um, the, the haves. Well, I, not totally, because if you look to the left, um, you're going to see that the performance was pretty good in some of the areas that um, I have been calling the have nots, um, the haves versus the have not again so if we look at the performance um, so again I, I think these things on the tape I welcome them when there's an overreaction like this um, but you had the I mean look at what the cues did today they finished from so all this I think in summary as I go through the numbers you know keep in the back of your mind I think just all this really gave a nice trading day uh, because look at what the cues did today 
from open to close up 1.7 percent so if you're a day trader you were loving this type of market today um, overall they did finish in the green after opening in the red today so finished up 1.1 percent they started the day down about 60 basis points also look at what the small caps did today too also very strong today finished in the green uh, finished stronger I think than S&P yeah here's S&P which did finish in the green for the day and um, and the small caps really uh, very nice because they started down 1.2 percent I think they started down the worst and um, really nice reversal there bonds continue to be a, a, a non-factor uh, we talked about that a little bit in the weekend video they just seem to not have the they seem to have lost the momentum for now so I think just being patient within this group within bonds basically and and you know maybe setting some alerts and and you know sometimes when when groups or asset classes lose momentum sometimes it just takes a long time uh, for that to come back uh, gold also a non-factor I would say for the day uh, finished up positive but no momentum there and then really what was interesting was the VIX uh, the VIX which was pretty well bid up at the end of last week uh, you know it got hit hard in the afternoon today so let's go through a couple charts you know so what we talked about in the weekend video was of course this ugly weekly bar in the S&P and it looked like and it felt like we were gonna have some downside follow-through coming into Monday well we did and uh, as I said and I released one of these videos to the public this this weekend but I said hey if we start down maybe it'll entice some buyers to kind of come out a little bit and I think that worked pretty well. Uh, the level to watch for the rest of the week, because again, this is just Monday. Remember how Monday and Tuesday were last week and, and maybe Wednesday too. And then we got a complete reversal. So to me, being that we don't have, a, you know, we're still on support, which is 2770. Uh, again, these lines are pre-drawn for us, but 2774, that's the, that's the line in the sand to watch for me uh, because right now we're sideways and above 3022 we reg we regain the uptrend and below 2774 we're back in a downtrend for now we're sideways there's just not much more else to really go uh rely on there um and i think it speaks for itself daily charts a little bit different we did get rejected by the 200 day moving average and we're in value so uh, you know again there's 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 no major signal here we found support at the 20 day moving average we're still below the five period and we're right smack in the middle of the value area so what what's the conclusion to draw from that sideways on the weekly sideways on the daily uh, we'll continue to trade for me because this video is for information purposes only not giving out any advice or recommendations but for me continue to kind of p be positioned a little bit lighter and even like i left a little bit of money on the on the table today i'll go over all today's trades but amd was something that we put on on friday and um and also vrtx uh you know this is the market i think right now to not be super greedy if you have real a really nice day like uh, we had like we had today uh, and catching some trades where we put on uh, some risk, you know, into Friday's weakness. Uh, this this was really nice. And again, uh, take I take profits because I realize that we're in a sideways market. And then just wait for some some opportunities uh, to reemerge because, you know, I think that if you're patient, right? And I know that's what everybody always says. You have to be patient, and so forth. But it's true. Um, we've caught a lot of opportunities from this from this weekend's watch list. Here was this weekend's watch list that I put out only 11 names look at what these names did this week so again this this gives me a lot of like pride when when i spend when i spend time put the work in and um and they come up with results like this uh very very strong uh vrtx which was what i was long coming into the day up 3.8 percent big day and then amd up five percent so we'll go over those charts in just a second uh, but also a number uh, another of, of other names i went into octa that was up 3.9 percent perhaps i should have went into uh crowdstrike it was kind of a flip of a coin for me but i got the alert first on octa and um and went into that name but you know all these names did pretty well so nice and and very happy to see that service now uh, saw some calls today so again like I've said before and this is my goal right because service now saw calls today AMD saw some calls today and um, maybe one or two other name on on this list but again 
to do the homework and either be into the position or be ready into the position by this time you see option activity. Uh, I think that there's such an emphasis on option activity, but a lot of times what happens is it hits the tape and the stock's already up 2%. Now, I don't think that was the case with ServiceNow today, uh, but a lot of times that's the case and you have to you have to chase a name that's up 25 or 3%, which it's so much better when you do the work and either you get into the name before the momentum call buying starts or you already have it on your radar and, and locked and loaded and, and ready to go. So um, very nice, I think, overall. And I'll go over my trades here in just a second. Uh, but I also wanted to go over, I might as well go talk about what we saw in AMD on Friday. Um, AMD was one of those situations where you basically um, you know, had to hold your nose and, and buy on the dip a little bit. Because there wasn't any, as I went over in the, in the watch list this weekend, there wasn't anything bad in AMD's quarter. It was just one of those situations where, you know, maybe it had run up and there was, they were expecting, uh, they were expecting a lot out of AMD's quarter. Numbers were fine and it actually sold off. Um, I kind of butchered this a little bit on Friday because I wanted to get into AMD on the dip and it kept on going a little bit lower. So I initially have, if you remember on Friday, I initially had a day trade on, I switched out of it and um, made it into a swing trade. But if we go back to, pr to Friday's price action, um, you're gonna be able to see, and I think there was a VPOC taken out, maybe it was on the one hour, uh, but here's the move out of value today. and. This happens, um, and that's why I like to pre-position a little bit into AMD because there's just it ends up seeing call buying on dips. It's it's one of the better names to play into weakness. Um, there it is, right there. So I think originally uh, on Friday when the name was down, or no, the name started to go higher. So I got caught in a day trade, put on a swing trade, um, how to kind of stick uh, stick with it through Fridays. Uh, mess and then all of a sudden you know that happened um, also on the one hour chart here in AMD um, it also managed to get into value for the day uh, so pretty nice um, and now if you like AMD uh, you could use sorry the charts just adjusting here um, but it did get into value like in the, in the beginning of the day uh, but and you could use your f basically 50 70 as your stop now i got out of this i'm st i'm st i still hold the cash position in this in the ttg tactical portfolio but as far as my trading account i'm out of this if it comes back and retest like if we get some weakness overnight or something then 5064 would be a great place to um to reassert myself into a trade there vrtx which was a, which was our favorite setup on friday um you know showed some nice relative strength so gave a little bit of a hint uh VRTX on um, on Friday that it was showing relative strength, uh, but again similar to AMD, right? And if you if you look at the chart pattern here, very strong earnings, but it ran you know into earnings, so so sold off a bit on good news because the expectations were too high, and you got a gift, you got a retest back into support, and um, and also to the bottom of the new value area for May, and the thing bounced nicely. Um, so I was in I was in both options and stock in this one. I took my profits in uh, in options and and ran because uh, as you could see, yeah, you know, twenty bucks paid thirteen fifty on fr on Friday. So I'm happy to take that gain and and run with it, even though there's plenty of time and I'm still in stock, right? So we went over this um, in detail on Friday. Uh, I think of the halftime video that I sent out, but legging into this, um, I also added some stock 251. So where did this thing get to today? 264. Beautiful. All right, and then there was then there was some there was plenty of trades to do today. Now is one of the setups that we talked about in the weekend video. Had an inside day on Friday, basically pushing back to those highs. Impressive. I also took tandem today. Uh, tandem triggered for me. I uh, was looking at this on uh, the one hour. I think it was the one hour. Getting uh, basically coming in here towards the end of um, I guess was this was today. Yeah. So here was your break of out of value. Oh, that's a five minute. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong time frame. 
here's the hour and break of the value area. So this is what I was looking for today. Uh, it was a little bit of shake and bake on that first break um, of the value area because it kind of came back and retreated a little bit, but hung in there and ended up doing fine for the day. Uh, I'm still long this one. Uh, I want to kind of hold, try to hold on to this one. Um, next, just I like to always cover my trades here. NEE, you know, so looking for something different was noticing that the weakness in the utilities. Um, now this thing sold off. I don't know why there's a nasty red bar here, but there's a VPOC up here. So I did take a target in that trade. So again, looking for something a little bit different. Um, so it took a target in here. That's not a full exit, but put on that trade a little bit later. But Octave, I did get out of uh, Octave for the day. So again, not being super greedy, just realizing the market gave us a really nice setup for the day. Uh, people on Twitter getting you know, super bearish, um, thinking like all of a sudden we're going to return to the lows. Um, <laughs> so you know, th these are nice things to take advantage of. If you can remain somewhat neutral, um, I think I still have a quote up that I saw. And I apologize because I don't know how to... How to uh, pronounce her last name, but Anne Marie, uh, and she put out this too. I can't agree more. This market, if you stop watching the news, you'll see what is happening much more clearly. I promise. I love that, and I always like to f to feature uh, someone else's tweets who just does a really good job at staying um, objective and analyzing the information in front of them, doing their homework, and finding the setups. Now, if the setups don't work, you know I, this happened to me last week. So again, this isn't easy every single day. I mean, I got I got stopped out of a couple of positions at the end of the week. And um, none of them were that harmful to me, right, in terms of losses. Maybe one stung a little bit. But, um, but you know, in like the one name, I think it was Baba, you know, I did take a target. Um, I, I, what kind of stung with that name was I, I, I didn't take my second target. I was like, I, I think this thing is really going to get going now. You know, and then, of course, we had some political news. So it happens. Um, you know, I'm happy taking a few stops, hitting the reset button, and then, you know, being very open-minded and, and, and finding the next opportunities. So that's it for, for today. Um, again, you can find my, um, my watch list video that I sent out to members on Sunday, yesterday, and um, you could go through the analysis that, that we went through. But I still think there's some, some opportunities in there. Nice to see the software group, uh, which was mainly, if we go back to if we go back to the names that performed really well, I mean, energy, unbelievable. I'm not in any energy, but man, what a move up 7% after they sold off. And, um, you know, there, of course, is the software, but there's a lot of different groups. Of course, biotech coming back. Uh, we talked about biotech, how it got a little bit overcrowded. Uh, last week, it saw some uh, outflows in the biotech group. So nice to see this come back as strong. Again, just something that happens, you know, once once a group gets a little bit overcrowded, uh, they start to see some profit taking in there, but really nice. So still in value for the month, but wow, what a nice bounce uh, uh, today for the biotech group, up 5%. All right, guys, I'll leave it there. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.